Okay, so uh, question 76 to 80, uh, talking about the Golgi apparatus. Hey, that's not fair that, they, you know, they had another uh, unit in which they were talking about the Golgi, and I was feeling guilty that I kept saying Golgi apparatus when they kept saying Golgi complex. I don't like Golgi complex. Anyway, <laughs> so here they say uh, Golgi apparatus, I approve. Um, anyway, next uh, they talk about the cisterna and the the cis and the trans, of course, with your organic chemistry review, uh, you know you know the meaning before they explain it to you. Cis obviously means it's on the same side, and trans means it's on opposite sides. Um, so it's on the other side of the uh, Golgi, and then in the middle is the medial. So no uh, surprises there. And then they uh, show you figure one. Uh, they have the Golgi apparatus, and then to the left they have x and y. I think it's pretty obvious what x and y are <laughs> because, um, you know, we have the Golgi apparatus is the export department of the cell. It sends materials to the cell membrane and for exocytosis. So that's uh, the export department. And so the, the materials it sends are proteins. And where are proteins created? It's created in the synthesis department of the cell. And the synthesis department is the um, rough endoplasmic reticulum. That's where you have, uh, because ribosomes provide the environment for protein synth synthesis, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is called rough because it looks dotted with ribosomes, as we can see. So it's flattened sacs dotted with ribosomes. That's the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And that's where the site of protein synthesis. Yes, there is some protein synthesis that occurs um, in the cell that is not associated with rough ER. It occurs in the cytosol of the cell or in the solution that bathes the inside of the cell. And these are with uh, free ribosomes, um, free range ribosomes. I'm just adding that, forget it. Anyway, so, um, but that kind of um, protein synthesis is not for exportation. This is for export and and it would uh, take information from the nucleus, which would be at Y, then uh, take that information to X, then um, send this along. And so uh, figure one shows the export department showing that the, uh, the cis uh, vesicles or cisterna, um, they sort of coalesce together and they move through the system. Mm, I could understand uh, that they thought it could be like that, but uh, for me it doesn't make much sense. Um, but uh, because the body doesn't usually do stuff like that, except uh, you know in rare situations like the epithelia and whatever. But um, nonetheless, um, this is just a theory uh, that they're presenting. But in the end, it's the export department, so it sends the proteins to secretory granules, so to secrete those proteins to the outside of the cells, like antibodies, something like that, hormones, um, or it sends uh, to the plasma membrane to serve as integral or intrinsic proteins in the membrane. Uh, for example, um, uh, receptors in the membrane or, or um, channels, uh, you know, sodium potassium ATPase or, or some kind of channel in the membrane. So these are, you know, different uh, routes for the proteins. Or to the lysosomes, if it's going to a lysosome, that protein is, uh, is going to have a rough life after just being born and being sent to a lysosome because the lysosomes are the um, digestive, um, have the digestive enzymes of the in, in side of the cell and it's a membrane bound organelle and so it will uh, break apart that uh, uh, protein so and then it shows figure two which is more with vesicles moving between the cisterna and that to me you know intuitively uh, seems to make more sense um, and that uh, there's some solid not solid but there's some stable part of, of the cell that remains there and the vesicles uh, shuttle or transport the uh, glycoproteins or proteins um, between the different uh, cisterna so that's um, figure two and uh, yeah so then we go to the first question 76 a major distinction uh, between the two models is that so A, glycoproteins are modified in different ways. We know nothing about that. We've been provided no information about the modification of glycoproteins specifically to the different models. B, uh, glycoproteins move between the cisternae 1 but not 2. 
It's the opposite. In Cisterna 1, the whole thing sort of, the different vesicles sort of coalesce, and then the whole thing moves in like some sort of uh, assembly line. You know, it just sort of uh, moves through right to the end, and then a new one comes in. Uh, but uh, C says vesicles move between Cisterna in 2, exactly, but not in 1. And yeah, we see that through the diagram, and that's pretty easy to see. And then D says vesicles are are involved in two but not in one but that's not true because uh, vesicles are involved in both uh, in one it coalesces in the other uh, it is a shuttle between the um, different cisterna so 76 the answer is c moving on to 77 instructions come from organelle y to organelle x the mystery organelles that lead to the production of protein so uh, the instructions carried by organelle x to organelle sorry, organelle Y to organelle X are in the form of, well, again, um, this is another question. This is the central dogma of, uh, of biology where you have the fact that DNA is transcribed in the nucleus into messenger RNA and translated in a ribosome into protein. That is the central dogma of, uh, of biology. And uh, the, pro the ribosomes uh, could be, as I said, free or dotted, you know, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but it's the ribosomes that provide the environment for protein synthesis. And uh, in terms of the messenger, um, you know, the messenger is a messenger and not DNA. <laughs> it's not the same as DNA. It is DNA's message that leaves the nucleus and then goes to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And that message is translated uh, into a protein. And the message is different from DNA because the, the message does not have deoxyribose because this is deoxyribonucleic acid. This does not have deoxyribose. It ha just has ribose, <laughs> so, uh, which is a, a five-carbon uh, sugar. So deoxyribose, of course, is missing an oxygen uh, compared to a ribose. And the other thing is um, mRNA has uh, a nitrogen base, which is uracil not uh, thymidine, as DNA has thymidine. The other thing is that uh, messenger RNA is not a double-stranded uh, helix, as DNA is. It is a single-stranded molecule. So, um, so there are different reasons why this is a transcript of the DNA molecule. It is not the DNA itself coming out of the nucleus. DNA is royalty. It sits on the throne in the nucleus and it sends out a messenger. And so um, the, the messenger is, of course, going to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is organelle X, and organelle Y is uh, certainly the nucleus. So the answer for 77 is D. Um, 78 to 80, so they provide some extra information about uh, oligosaccharides. Oligo is a uh, thing that uh, uh, means uh, a few. You've heard of oligopolies in Russia <laughs> and, uh, and other places in the wor world. It means uh, a few. And so um, the, uh, an oligosaccharide can be a disaccharide like la lactose or, or mannose or, or sucrose or um, or, uh, or it could have a several more, um, but it's not, uh, well, it is a type of polysaccharide, but generally speaking, when we say polysaccharides, it means large numbers of um, carbohydrates that are bonded together with uh, glycosidic uh, linkages. So, um, I'll give some information here. Uh, they talk about this uh, G thing, and uh, it's going through different stages, ends up, uh, with U and the G it says has uh, 10 subunits 10 subunits uh, 2 are this uh, uh, glick I'm gonna call it glicknack okay and uh, and 8 mannose is what it has at the beginning and then over here way at the end it has uh, 4 glicknacks and um, and it has uh, three manos, uh, two GAL and two SA. Looks like a grocery list. And uh, so the first uh, question is, which of the intermediate substances contain galactose? So which ones contains galactose? Well, we know that 
Here is galactose. We see that the final compound contains uh, some galactose. So presumably galactose was added at some point. And, um, and then we see that, uh, that we see there is an enzyme called gal GAL transferase. And, um, and so in the passage it said that GAL stands for galactose. So GAL transferase presumably adds galactose to S, uh, creating T. And uh, the reason it must be that is because U has galactose. So it must have been added by galactose transferase. So, and, and that's the only possibility. We don't see any other options because then after that there's SA transferase and then we do see that there's SA. So it makes sense that transferases, therefore we can deduce that transferases add substances to a protein. And the only ones that the only intermediate substances that contain galactose is T only. U would have been a final substance, but it's not even an option. So the other ones do not yet have galactose. Okay, um, and just in general, enzymes can be named after either the substrate that they, um, they're involved in, um, in reacting with, or they can be named uh, because of their action that they have. And so galactose transferase trans, likely transfers um, galactose from one substance to another substance. So it adds it to uh, S in this case. So 78 is uh, A. Now we look at 79 and 80 and it says, uh, starts by saying the glycoprotein destined for lysosome first, it says, um, has phosphate added to it. Okay, and uh, then um, phosphate transferring enzyme. Okay, a bunch of uh, test tubes and another graph. Why not? <laughs> let, let me tell you, there's not a lot of things I can promise you about the real GAMSAT, but I can promise you this. You will see a lot of graphs, a lot of graphs. And um, one thing to keep in mind, the more complicated the graph looks is the happier you should be because it's the more uncomfortable everyone else is, so you can relax because the questions probably won't be that complicated. So, um, and yet people will get a lot of it wrong because they'll be intimidated by it, but not you. So question 79, uh, the enzymes uh, whose activity is greatest in tube seven. Okay, so we look at tube seven and we see that it has a sort of a whitish, um, you know, content, and then we look at the graph, and the graph is sort of whitish, and then we look at the tube number along the x-axis of the graph, and the tube number seven, the peak is that whitish area, so everything's pointing towards that whitish area. So, so what do we have in the whitish area, uh, the peak of the graph? We have manosidases, and we have glicnac transferases. Well, we already suggested that transferases probably add something because we saw two examples of that in the figure they provided. So I think glicnac transferases will transfer or add glicnac to it. But manosidases, I really don't know just yet. So um, I'm going to uh, take a little look at the, um, the figure three and if you look at it, you, you notice that there's that we had two glicnacs over here. So we have two glicnacs here, but in the end we had four glicnacs. What happened in between? We had a glicnac transferase. So now this confirms that glicnac transferase adds to um, to proteins. Okay, then what else? We have those minosidases. So over here we have eight mannose uh, uh, subunits, carbohydrate uh, subunits. But then over here, we only have three mannose carbohydrate. We lost, somebody removed mannose. <laughs> so presumably it, it was mannosidase. Uh, the mannosidases, actually there's a couple of them and likely one removed a certain number and another removed another number of mannoses from the original. So now we can deduce, looking at figure three uh, after we have uh, looked at figure four, that, <clears throat> that the enzymes in tube seven probably remove mannose and add glicnac. 
So uh, 79 is A. And then uh, we look at uh, number 80. Which of the following is most likely? Okay, so they're talking about cis and medial and trans and all that. Okay, so uh, to discover that, we just, you know, they made us look, you know, it's that made us look stuff. So that um, we just looked at manosidases and glicknac transferases in that figure three. And uh, they were sort of, uh, they, they occurred in the middle of the figure. It doesn't really tell me anything, but it does occur in the first number of reactions. We see those. Okay, just store that information for a moment. Let's look back. So looking at figure four, um, you see phosphate transferring enzyme. That's in uh, tube number six. So phosphate transferring enzyme, we were told in the passage, um, is an enzyme found when something is added to the glycoprotein first. So it's something that happens probably over here, something that happens really early uh, that this event occurs. Now, what's one of the last events that occurs in this whole process? Well, look at, um, look at uh, um, test tube number eight, and then look at the graph. Test tube number eight, we have gal transferase and SA transferase. They made us look at gal transferase a couple of uh, questions ago. And gal transferase and SA transferase, they're happening over here. Okay, so they're happening near the end. So we have the, um, that whole lysosome situation with the uh, phosphate group, phosphate transferring enzyme on this end. And then we have this other thing happening on this end. So do you know what we have here? So we have three uh, different um, um, test tubes, uh, test tubes six, seven, and eight. And according to the enzymes that are in there, according to the graph in figure four, uh, it is very clear that this one is going to be cis. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to write it up here for you. Uh, this one is going to be cis. This one is going to be medial. Um, and this one is going to be trans. So that is very clear from um, those, uh, from which enzymes are during this process, in which enzymes are being modified as they move through the Golgi apparatus from the cis side towards the inside part and then towards the trans side before they go um, for exportation. So that's. Um, that uh, gives us the answer choice D, where the 7 is the uh, medial one. <laughs> Test tube numbers number 9 was empty, so <laughs> that was pretty easy. So um, anyway, so if you want to, uh, uh, if you're doing some review with the book, uh, you can look at um, bio 1.1 uh, and uh, 1.2. Um, for the cell, for the eukaryotic cell. Uh, three is protein synthesis. Um, that would be a review of that. And then uh, chapter four is uh, good to review both enzymes and for uh, bioenergetics. And finally, org 12.3 uh, for carbohydrates and glycosidic bonds and, and things of that nature. <laughs>